Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Zero to Sixty. It's raining today, which that means I felt we had enough water to give the 17T car a wash. I mean, it's been putting in some work lately. I thought it deserved some love, and it certainly looks a lot better. Um, I have another map from JSR, which may make the car go faster than that 5.75. So. Hopefully we'll be able to try that in the next few days, and if it does go quicker, I'll let you guys know. Uh, also, a huge shout out to everyone that commented on the brake unboxing video. Um, yeah, huge amounts of comments. I really didn't think that through. That was a lot of comments that I ended up having to read over the last two days. Uh, just so that you guys know, um, we have these members which come up at the top, but the legit top comment with the most amount of likes that I can see is from Zigant. Is he can't? I'm obviously not pronouncing that properly. Um, and then very close second is Peter2JZ. So if you haven't gone and read the comments on that post, please go back, not the post, the video, go back. I'll link it in the top comment below of this video and uh, make sure you upvote the one that you found the most entertaining or the guy that you'd like to see win the start button or if he's a member, some merch. All right, so this video, what a long intro, sorry. Um, what I basically want to do, which you guys will know, I want to drop the oil out of the DCT. So when I put this DCT in, which is a bit over a month ago now, um, I did say I'm going to run the car for 1,000 Ks and then change the fluid again. It's been about 1,500 Ks, most of which were at 26 PSI, trying to do one to two runs. Um, yeah, I've really been probably a little bit mean with this engine and gearbox lately, just trying to chase that one to two figure. Uh, so it's time to drop the DCT oil, see how bad it looks, see if my clutches are filling that oil up with crap. Um, I assume that much like an automatic, if the clutches are starting to break down, the oil's gonna be very contaminated. So it'll be interesting to see how it looks after 1500 Ks. And I'm also gonna do an engine oil change as well, just to try and be kind to the girl and make it last a bit longer. All right, I'll get it up in the air and we'll start dropping some fluids. I have, well, I've just brought it into the shed and dried it off. So it is a bit warm. Um, I don't need to run it anymore. Yeah, let's get this oil dropped out. All right, so that's the engine oil coming out. It's not too bad. I'll try and get the light behind it. Can't really get the light behind it. Oh, it's there. Yeah, look, it's darker than I'd like. I try and keep the oil super clean in this thing, but it's not too bad. Might start draining the DCT. I want one of those things where you can hold the oil drains up high so I don't need to do this silliness. Hmm. All right, so the DCT, um, I mean, it looks just like a tr an automatic oil pan sump which means we're probably gonna make a nice mess as it squelches all the oil out. One thing, unlike a auto, it doesn't have a torque converter that's gonna have all the, a load of oil still in it. So we should get a much better flush doing it this way than you do when you just drop the pan on an auto. Uh, oh my God, it's gonna make a mess. I can feel it. I bet all the girls that watch this are about to relate to what's happening right now. All two of you. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. And the oil doesn't look terrible either. How's the camera angle? Eh. Yeah, oil doesn't look too bad. What I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna let them both completely drain out and then we'll see how much metal particles are floating in the bottom of these pans. All right, see you guys shortly. Oh, I knew it was gonna happen. Squelch, squelch. Okay, hopefully that catches it. Yay! At least we know what the girls feel like. Right. I should have said as well, I did crack this before I did the sump plug. But we will have a quick look at this filter, see if there's anything scary in there. In fact, I might just get a rag. Won't be two seconds. Ugh. All right. Trying to make a minimum amount of mess here. It's gonna happen. Uh, the, I mean, my fingers are filthy, but the oil's pretty clean in there. Considering what the engine's been put through lately, this looks pretty good. The oil is cleaner than I thought it was looking through the sump. Um, all right, I'm going to put a fresh one in and close that cap off. Nothing scary. Whoop, whoop. New O-rings filter and she's good to go back in. 
I am going over the top, I feel, probably, with oil changes on this. Um, I think this oil's probably done, I think I changed when I did the DCT, so it's probably done about 1500 Ks, which is not many, but I don't know. I feel like this sort of power level with hybrids, little China frame hybrids, we're probably pushing things a little bit too much. And I can just imagine cylinder pressures in the engine are getting high. Wow, sorry, not cylinder pressures, cylinder temps. Um, yeah, the, obviously the exhaust housings on these China turbos, they're pretty much the same as a stock turbo, basically. Um, and it's, it's not great. It's not great for this power, but we've got to do what we can to make it last. So we'll keep the oil fresh for as, long, well, as often as we can. All right, we'll bring it up. We'll have a look at the oil underneath. All right, guys, so what I thought was pretty clean oil, we can see we've got a swirl in here. Now, this tray was completely cleaned out before I dropped the DCT oil in it. <sighs> I know it's not the most scientific thing, but the majority of the oil does look pretty clean. <gasps> okay, that car, it, obviously it wasn't cleaned out properly. That is black oil. Hmm, it's like somebody changed diesel oil in here. Right, let me just go straight to the bottom. That's obviously gone to the top. So that's nothing to worry about. That must be remnants. I wasn't cleaned properly. Okay. You see that black ring? That is clutch material. Hmm. But, oh look. I know this isn't the most scientific thing. I was kind of hoping it was going to be pretty clear, but I'm starting to think these clutches that have done, they must have done 196, 197,000 Ks now. And obviously we're pushing over 600 wheel horsepower through them. It's probably not good. Oh my God. Sorry, there was a smudge on the lens then. But yeah, basically I wanted to see how much clutch material is in there. They, these clutches have done, yeah, best part of 200,000 Ks, and now I'm really pushing them more than a DCT should be pushed. So I'm probably going to need to upgrade the clutches in this if I want to keep going faster. I do want to keep going faster, especially when the single goes on. I want to push it harder and harder. Um, yeah, so let me know thoughts on DCT clutch upgrades. I know, I mean, XHP now say that a stock clutch should hold 1,000 newton meters. So I could just get a new stock clutch pack, which is probably going to be the cheapest option. But yeah, guys, if you know any deals on DCT clutch upgrades, please let me know below. I'm keen. The engine oil. Look, it's not. It's not too bad, but it's not as clean as I'd like. I am running Castrol Supercar. And the main reason I want to get on top of the engine oil, uh, obviously, is to protect the engine. But it always smells, and I am a freak for smelling things. It doesn't smell too bad. It doesn't smell as much like E85 as I thought it would. When you crack the um, oil filter cap, there's just a really strong smell of E85 coming out of the engine, but maybe that's to do with and the PCV. Yeah, this oil actually doesn't smell too bad. In fact, it doesn't really smell like E85 at all. All right, that's good. Let's wind the boost up. <laughs> oh, God. Actually, JSR suggested that I... Um, Maybe wind the boost down a little bit. Thinks I've been beating on it a bit too much. Anyway, right, guys, let me get some new fluids in it and we'll go from there. The first thing I'm gonna do is put the engine oil in. Um, obviously, don't wanna forget that. And then we'll do the DCT fill. And I know it's an awesome topic. I'm using Castrol 1060 in this thing. Um, look, speak to your tuner about what oil they reckon you should use. There's so many different theories on what oil to use. Um, this being an older engine, it's done about 110,000 Ks. I'm just thinking the thick oil will help fill some gaps that thinner oil might not. And it's the stuff they use in M cars. So it's probably got stuff in it that's going to suit being raped a little bit more than a normal N engine, N Finelli. But yeah, speak to your tuner. I think it's more important to change oil frequently than what oil you're putting in, that's for sure but I'm putting the most expensive oil in and changing it frequently because I don't want to blow the engine up. And while that's filling up there, I just thought I'd show you guys. Five liters is what come out. And I can't remember if I mentioned it on the channel. I'm starting to freak out. That's 
nine, eight, seven, six, five liters. So just under five liters. The car is using a bit of oil. Um, when I do like a rolls night or the lakeside eighth mile drags, I think it uses about a liter of oil just to do those events, which is weird. Um, don't really notice it when I'm driving around on the street, even doing the one to twos, but obviously doing the continual races, like really beating on the car from low RPMs, seems to get it to consume a bit of oil. Let me know your thoughts on that. I'm hoping it's just the China Turbos coming to the end of their life. That would be ideal. Um, and I mean, they've not had an easy life. I'm not going to blame them. Yeah, hopefully it's not the engine. I mean, I did fit the valve stem seals to this head, so maybe it is the engine. We'll see. We'll see. I am just going to measure how much DCT fluid come out. Oh, guys, the fluid looks pretty clean. I definitely didn't need to do this DCT flush. But peace of mind. And I guess now at least it's had a proper flush of oil. There would have been a little bit of automatic transmission fluid still in my oil cooler. That'll do. And where's the bottom of the pan? It's pretty good. It's a little bit of glitter in the bottom, but I'm now worried that it didn't get washed out properly. I'm happy with the condition of the DCT oil. And how much come out of it? Just see those marks. So four and a half liters. Ish. Maybe even just over four liters. Oh, we're dripping onto the light. All right, guys. So that's interesting. Just over four liters is all that come out the pan on the DCT. Um, where it took about, I think it took about seven or eight liters to fully fill it. I can't remember exactly now. Um, maybe even more. That said, I did try and flush out the trans cooler as well as I could, and that might have used a bit doing that. And also. I haven't taken out the actual filter element of the DCT. The DCT has two filters. as a cartridge filter, much like the engine. Then it has a pan filter like a normal automatic. Um, because they've only been in there for a thousand Ks, I didn't really want to change them. They would probably tell a better story about the condition of the clutches than what we've just done here. Um, but again, I just want to put fresh oil in. I don't really want to pay for a filter just yet. Because the DCT filters are bloody expensive. Right. Time to uh, get the DCT fluid in. Oh, I'm not going to film it because I have filmed doing a DCT fill before, but I will comment on the GTS style fill procedure. So the GTS E92 M3s, they have a little add-on on the side of the DCT box, which allows you to get about another litre of fluid into the transmission. Now, I guess the idea of that is you've got more fluid in there, better for cooling, and just all in all better if you're cornering and there's no slosh, that sort of stuff. And I assume that's why BMW have done it. Um, now. I was originally going to put the car up on an angle so I can get that extra of, extra litre of fluid into the DCT. However, after seeing how clean the fluid looks right now and the fact that I've got a massive transmission cooler in the front guard here, like it's huge, there's probably 600 millilitres just in that, I think I'm going to leave it at a standard level. I'm not doing any hard G-force cornering. Um, the only hard G-forces are acceleration, so I don't think it's going to be too bad with slosh, considering the pickup in the transmission is towards the back. Um, yeah, just because I know people will mention it, that's why I'm not doing it. I don't think I need the extra litre in the car, and I'm just going to save the litre of DCT fluid, because it's also bloody expensive. All right, let me get it filled up. Still sounds good. Right, I've done the fill procedure. Um, hopefully in that clip you would have just seen that every three to five seconds the transmission lines are pulsing like they've got air in the lines, which is a bit weird. Um, just so everyone knows, the way I've done the DCT fill on this, I the way I do it, I fill the transmission up completely, then I'll start the car, then I'll fill it up again, then I'll put the bung back in, then I will actually get the transmission up to temperature. So I, on this time, I actually held the RPMs at 2,000 RPM for about one to two minutes. Oh, my door card's not fitting properly. 
about one to two minutes. Then I uh, basically check the level again and then just filled it until it's coming out. That's what I did. That's what I did the first time I filled the DCT up. And then I noticed that that coolant, not the coolant line, the oil cooler line for the transmission pulsing like it's got air in the lines. So I've then gone and done the procedure again. I've ran the car for quite a while. The transmission fluid was over, it was about 42 degrees C when I did the final fill then, or I think you're supposed to do it under 40, but a little bit over. But I want to just make sure all the air had worked its way through, but the transmission lines are still pulsing. Um, you can actually feel it on the gearbox. It's like the oil pump or whatever it is in the transmission is sending oil to the cooler like every three to five seconds. It's not a continuous flow. I don't know if that's normal. Be keen to know how the transmission cooler works on these DTTs, if anybody knows, or how it sends oil to the cooler instead of a constant feed. Maybe it's like, maybe it's got a pressure valve, so it creates oil pressure, goes to the mechatronics unit, and then bleeds off to the transmission cooler. If somebody's ever pulled one apart to that level, I'd be keen to know. Um, I'm gonna end this video off here. Things to summarize. The DCT fluid was pretty clean considering what it's been through. Um, I did try and flush the transmission as much as I could when I did the pan and that sort of stuff, but there would have been parts of the transmission that this clean fluid has helped clean. Keep in mind it had done 195,000 Ks when I pulled it out of the parts car. And you know what, I can't remember, I've, I've probably done over 2,000 Ks on the DCT now. Um, so yeah, I did not need to change the fluid in my opinion, but at least it's a bit of a peace of mind for it. The fluid's looking good. Confused about the transmission cooler lines pulsing. Maybe it's normal, maybe it's not. Something I need to look at. I never noticed it with the auto. And to be honest, I haven't spent that much time looking at it whilst this car's running. So, with the DCT, so who knows? Maybe I should fix those lines so they can't move because they're going to wear or rub something. Um, yeah, engine oil's looking good. It's good to know that the actual oil doesn't smell like E85. It is just the, the rocker cover, which is probably just to do with PCV or however the hell that works. All right. I'm gonna end it off there. I think the car's doing pretty well. Um, I think I mentioned it, I'm gonna change it to a silver start button so it matches the IS dials. That red was cool, but now I've got the IS dials, I need to change that, so I'm gonna do that as well. It's not gonna be a video on that, but I'm gonna change it. Keep in mind, you can get your start buttons from 0 to 60com Again, just a reminder about what I mentioned at the start of this video. If you haven't gone and liked or voted on a previous comment from the giveaway on the break video, please do. It's awesome. All right, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Catch you on the next one.